Hi, I'm Seth with Air Theater Designs, and I'm here today to talk about surround sound receivers and the correct way to set one up. Um, so we've been doing this for about 25 years, and we've learned a ton of stuff in, the, in that time with a probably 2,000, 2,500 receivers that we set up. We've also learned great things along the way from uh, Phil Jones, the trainer extraordinaire over at Sound United, uh, the guys over at Sumico Audio with their master's training, uh, Saif Hamidi, the uh, also trainer extraordinaire, formerly of Tweeter, and a bunch of other guys along the way. Um, so I'll jump right into a couple things that we've done that uh, definitely provide us with better sound. So the first thing is, as Public Enemy says, don't believe the hype. Well, in our industry with surround sound receivers, we say, don't believe the mic. So when you set up a surround sound receiver, there's an included microphone. You plug in the microphone, it's going to take readings of the room, and uh, on paper it tells you that it's automatically setting everything up perfectly. It is not. So the included microphone always misses with the center channel and the subwoofer. So typically you're going to find that your levels go anywhere from minus 10 to plus 10, and then you've got all the volume gradations in between. You might find that if the mic tells you that your left and right speaker are at, are at zero, that your center channel you're going to turn up to like two or three, because it might have that center channel at like minus four, and you're saying, hey, what'd the guy say? You need to go in and turn that up. Subwoofer, it always misses on, and you might find that it's at somewhere like negative seven, negative eight. You might turn that up to plus three, plus four, plus five. So don't believe the mic. Go in and make those settings afterward. One interesting thing that Sumico would do is your mic is also going to give you distances of everything. And let's say that it said that the center channel was at 14 feet from the listening area. One of their tenants was that you would go in and digitally tell this to be at 17 feet. So the center channel digitally is kind of where the TV is or your screen is. And so the vocals are coming right from that. That's another way to make your vocals a little bit more true. But uh, the main thing to stick with is don't believe the mic. Number two is always set your speakers on large. So today's receivers have settings for small and large. Um, if you've got big monsters like these guys, you want them producing full range sound. Today's receivers, um, when you have it set on small, what it's trying to do is it assumes you got a speaker the size of this thing. And if you have a speaker that's this size, you don't want that producing full range because it can't. But if you've got big giants, you want them reproducing that sound. It's going to give you sound that is much more full and that provides more presence having your speakers on large. So small, large, always go over to large. The one caveat here is some older receivers from Onkyo and Denon, if you put the receiver on large, the subwoofer doesn't work. So if you go to large, it's not working. You might have to go back to small. One other trick is lots of receivers, you have to go into an additional setting. Uh, Yamaha calls it extra bass. Uh, Marantz calls it, Mark, what do they call it, Marantz? LTE plus main. LTE plus main. So after you do the setting, put it on large, you got to go into LTE plus main. It's going to vary depending on your receiver, but that setting needs to be on for the subwoofer to operate. So that's number two. Number three thing is the 80 hertz myth. So surround sound receivers, initially, most of them will have a default electronic crossover of 80 hertz. That means at 80 hertz, all bass is going toward the subwoofer, 80 hertz and above is going to the speakers. Again, you got big rocking $3,500 monsters, you want them producing as much bass as they can. So in your receiver, there'll be a way to take that crossover down, and it varies depending on the receiver, but normally the next setting is gonna be 60 hertz. So if you have the option to go 60 hertz, and you have anywhere from bookshelf size speakers to larger speakers, put that on 60 instead of 80. Um, if you have even larger speakers, and if your receiver allows for it, try to even put that lower, 50 hertz, 40 hertz. As you go lower, you're going to get to a certain point where it seems like you're missing some information. And at that point, bring the crossover one level. So for example, you might have at 60 hertz, things sound better. And you're like, oh, I'm hearing more fullness overall from my soundstage in the front. If you have the ability to take it down to 50 or 40, you might say, eh, it seems like I'm missing something. So then you put it back at 60 hertz. But again, mid to large speakers, never use 80 hertz. Bring it down to 60 hertz from there. Um, one thing that's very nice about these three points is they're very easily proved and demonstrable. So for example, you can put on a track, and we normally use tracks that have a very rhythmic 
bass note and good mid range. So for example, uh, the Eagles, I can't tell you why. Uh, Sting, I burn for you, we use those two tracks regularly. What you can do is you can put on one of those tracks or one that you like, every 10 to 15 seconds, make one of those changes in your receiver or in your setting. So for example, get that track going, go from 80 hertz, let it play for 15 seconds, then go to 60 hertz. Then go to 80 hertz, go to 60 hertz. Listen for the difference. Whatever sounds best, that's what's best. You don't have to agonize over, man, I can't tell which one it is. Whatever sounds best to you, go with your gut, that's the best setting. But all three of these are something that you can easily prove to yourself what the best setting is. Um, we're going to do a future write-up on and a future video on ways to optimize speaker placement and performance as well. But hopefully these three points will make you get all of the performance you paid for out of your surround sound receiver. Please like and subscribe if this stuff is helpful. If we can ever help down the road, let us know. Thank you very much. Have a good day.